It's hard to watch, especially if you're one of the thousands of parents who put your kids on a school bus every day. In this case, the bus was headed to Bricolage Academy. The school fired the company that operated this bus. We've been digging into school buses and the companies that operate them to see how the system works. Yeah, and what we found isn't pretty. Let's bring in eyewitness investigator David Hammer. David, you looked under the hood, so to speak. What did you find? Well, Tom and Katie, it's not pretty. Uh, charter schools dominate local public education in New Orleans, as we all know. So the elected school board doesn't run the school bus system anymore. Each charter school has its own bus contract. So I spent the last two months gathering thousands of public records from 90 area charter schools and found major problems with the buses, safety violations, lack of insurance, and weak government oversight. And that's left some parents feeling like they've been taken for a ride. Okay. Cheryl Earl lives in Metairie, but sent her daughter on a two-hour school bus ride each way to the West Bank, so her seven-year-old could attend a new highly touted charter school. I will go on above and beyond for a perfect education or a decent education for my kids, so I put my faith in Athlos. Yeah. and Athlos and Durham have failed me 100%. And I'm she says the school, Athlos Academy of Jefferson Parish, and its school bus provider, Durham School Services, failed her when her daughter's bus went missing November 2nd for almost four hours. I was waiting um, right at the corner, right here, um, yeah. next to the stop sign. Earl's um, friend, Ariel Alexander, has, um, was at the bus stop at 545, the normal drop-off time. About 6.30 or 6.45 p.m., we began to become very frantic. So that's right? already three hours since yes, the bus Yes, absolutely. Already three hours. I'm crying. I'm hysterical. I'm thinking the worst. Durham is a major national school bus company. It offers parents an app to track their child's bus by GPS. Well, guess what? It doesn't work. Athlos Academy Board President Ben Bourgeois said Durham officials told him that the GPS and bus radios on the missing bus weren't working. But Durham later told WWL-TV they were. Here's a photo of Earl's daughter, Seven, when Jefferson Parish Sheriff's deputies finally found the bus at 8 p.m. It was still 10 minutes from their house and even further from the Kenner apartments where other kids on the bus lived. The police said it was a substitute bus driver who simply got lost. Earl confronted the driver at the scene. He honestly got lost. He said, your daughter told me where you live. Now this is a seven-year-old. Athlos fired Durham after the incident and replaced it with a small local company called Kids First Transportation. But our investigation of all 90 charter schools in the New Orleans area and their 18 school bus providers found Kids First has had its own issues. In November, this City of New Orleans email says a kid's first driver had called City Hall anonymously to say she didn't feel safe driving the company's buses. Two weeks later, the Louisiana State Police inspected eight of kids first 40 buses and found 67 violations, from no license plates and no insurance to defective emergency exits, defective brakes, inoperative brake lights and turn signals, and even a driver who was driving on a suspended license. Very bad situation, but again, Orleans that was Parish School Superintendent school Henderson driveway, Lewis says inspections sure. need to happen more often, but that's not likely with the state police handling them. They only have six inspectors for the whole New Orleans region. It's important that every school has someone on their staff that is actually monitoring buses, and I'm going to say every single day. Kids First owner Rory Askin said he had just bought those buses used, and now he's made sure all of the violations have been fixed. But that was not an isolated incident. A city sweep of school buses last August found this brake tag for a passenger car stuck on a kid's first bus instead of a heavy-duty vehicle tag like this one. It was similar to other violations by several local bus companies, not just kids first. There were seats that were ripped and torn, but also seats that were not bolted to the floor of the vehicle, allowing the seats to topple over and move around. A rear exit, emergency exit, padlocked shut. Yes, ma'am. 70 of the 90 charter schools in the area hire out their school bus service to 18 different companies. 
One of the ramifications of that is a disjointed system when it comes to transportation. It's city Councilwoman Kristen Gisselson Palmer is backing a new city ordinance proposed by the administration that would give the City Taxicab Bureau authority over school buses in New Orleans instead of relying on the undermanned state police. She says it's a question of safety. They're not only endangering the lives of the children and the passengers, but also other vehicles, other drivers. We want to play a part in this community. We want to do better. We want to help our, our city out. Even school bus company owners like Mark Hammond admit they need more oversight. Or there's just been a matter of time when things are just going to crumble because there's no one holding some these people up, or even myself, my company, up into a standard where things needs to be. Our review of public records suggests a lot of charter schools exert little to no control over their bus contractors. 52 of the 70 charter schools that hire out their bus service did not have proof that each bus was insured. 28 schools did not turn over the names of the people driving their students. And of the 42 that did, only 23 gave us background checks for the drivers. Are you concerned about that? Yes, I am concerned about that. The argument that we should have a single point in terms of ensuring that all these bus drivers are regulated, that the companies are regulated, and that the vehicles that are riding on the streets of New Orleans are safe. But new efforts to control the busing system come too late to help parents like Earl. You see, she named her daughter Seven because she was born seven years after her first daughter tragically drowned. November 2nd was just too much to bear. What's running through my mind is I said, God, I'm just being honest, you cannot allow this to happen to me again. I cannot believe that you're gonna take another child from me, God. How am I gonna get through this? She gave up on her charter school dream for seven. Unless you're gonna bring your kid to school, pick your kid up, and if you can do that, that's great. I can't do that. And neither can tens of thousands of others trying to navigate a new charter school bus system that one city official called the Wild Wild West. So as you might imagine, Cheryl and Ariel Alexander had a hard time believing that the Durham bus driver just got lost. But that is what the police determined, and he was not arrested. And Durham has stood by him, too, keeping him as a substitute bus driver. And Katie and Tan, you can actually use our website. We have a search engine to look up your school and the bus company. And tomorrow night at 10, I'm going to have a second part that looks at how we got into this mess. This is shocking. I mean, I think a lot of parents are going to watch that and say, I really need to ask some tough questions about how my children are getting to and from school. Right, and that's why we want them to be able to look up the schools and the bus companies. All right, David, thank you.